Okay, let's chat about databases. I love a good database. So let's get straight into it. What is a database? We're starting from the ground up. So if you are completely new to this, then this is great. A database is essentially just a collected, organized group of data. Why do we want to organize it? So that we can actually grab stuff from it, retrieve stuff from it in a really fast and efficient way. The better organized it is, the faster we can grab stuff and the better experience we're going to give to the people that we are grabbing stuff for. A good analogy you can think of is the Excel versus the database. Hopefully we all know what Excel is, the standard spreadsheets that you can get on Microsoft or even Google Sheets now is a good example. And while Excel may look like a good place to store data, it's really not. <laughs> not the sort of data that we're thinking about. If we want to store files or code or videos or music or photos, then Excel isn't going to cut it. And it can only really do limited types of relationships between data. Whereas with AWS and some of the database services they have, we can do some really complicated types of data relationships and we can get some really cool different types of data in there linked together, able to be retrieved for awesome, awesome uses. I can also just handle larger data volume, has really powerful reporting functionalities and lots of enhanced security features so that you can make sure that only the right people are seeing the data that you want them to see. Now, there are lots of different popular databases and database management systems, which are systems for managing databases around the place. So let's take a look at some of them because you might recognize a few of them. Database management systems are more about the systems that are actually used to manage multiple databases. And some popular ones are things like MySQL or MySQL. This is free and very reliably used. Many websites are using MySQL to store things like accounts and product details and things like that. Another popular one is Postgres SQL. This is more for larger, more scalable databases. We're making sure that the data is consistent and accurate is really, really, really important. Then we have the Microsoft SQL Server, which obviously has a really strong integration with Microsoft. However, it is a little bit more expensive and now it comes with some of the bells and whistles that you would expect from a Microsoft integrated service. It is a little on the pricey side. There's heaps of other ones out there. Some names you might remember or recognize as Oracle, SQLite, MariaDB, and Redis. But there's so many, we could just be talking about them all day. So let's move on to some users and some use cases of who is actually using databases. Pretty much everyone today is going to be using databases. <laughs> if you have data that you want to store, if you're a tech company, then you're probably going to be using a database. But some concrete examples are businesses, governments, healthcare, they all have huge amounts of data that they need to store and then access really quickly. You can think of these as different types of databases as well, where you have customer databases, you might have inventory databases, you might have e-commerce databases. There's all sorts here that are designed specifically for the actual use and industry that that company is part of. Now you might be thinking, hold on a second, what about storage services? We were just talking about storage services before. That's a very good point, but there's a couple of key differences to be aware of. The bottom line of which is that a storage service is just like a big data warehouse, just chucking everything in there. Whereas a database is a more organized storing of data. And the difference is in how we retrieve it. Because databases are more structured, you can query them much, much more efficiently and get your data much more efficiently. Whereas with a storage service, and it's just kind of all sitting around and hanging out there. So it's definitely not as efficient when you're wanting to grab data from it. Basically, if you just need to store and retrieve large files, like photos or videos or things like that, then perhaps a storage service is best. But if you want some sort of structured data that has relationships between the different types of data, perhaps like customer information or product details, maybe even transaction records, then a database is going to be a much better fit. Now, in AWS, there's, of course, heaps of different databases that we can choose from. We're going to have a quick sweeping look at a few of them. The first one is RDS, which is the Relational Database Service in AWS. The standard, it's the classic, and is a really good place to start if you're just looking for a trustworthy, reliable, standard database. It's good. It's where most people will start. Then we have DynamoDB, which is kind of a high-speed more like a database, so Dynamo, 
is how I think about it. It's great for very fast and flexible applications where you want your apps to be quick and to be able to handle a lot of users. Then we have Amazon Aurora, which is more for very large amounts of data. So if you're a very large company and you need to access a lot of data and you need it to be accessible all the time, then Amazon Aurora is a great choice. Next up, we have Redshift. Redshift helps you to analyze large amounts of data very quickly. Perfect for when you need insights into trends and analysis, really for picking out those kind of big picture overview trends from your data. Amazon Neptune is more for building networks of data. This is data that is very interconnected. So think like social networks or a recommendation system. All of these need to be very interconnected, which is where Neptune comes in handy. We also call this a graph database. I like to think of Neptune like the ocean. Everything is very interconnected. It's huge and swimming and yeah, it just kind of makes sense in my mind. Then we have Document DB, which is great at handling flexible and changing information. So really good for web applications that are dealing with different data of different sizes. And finally, Elasticache. Elasticache is an in-memory database, which means your application is going to be faster because it's storing all of your data very close by and your users can access that much faster. Now, are these the only ways that you can build databases? Absolutely not. These are what are called the managed databases services, which means that there's a lot that's already been done for you here. A lot of it is managed by AWS. But if you want to build a database completely from scratch, then you can absolutely do that. You just have to use the compute services. We have much more on compute services later on in other videos. So till then, my friends, have a wonderful time. We'll see you in the next video.